All right, so our next topic has to do with the reactions of alkanes, and what are we looking at car exhaust for? Well, it's gasoline that's being used in combustion engines, and the byproducts are showing up in car exhaust. Now, if you live in the cold climates like we do, in the wintertime, you'll recognize at intersections by stoplights where cars w sit and wait for the light to change, there will be something forming on the road surface, and this is exactly a deposit of water from that condensed steam coming from the car exhaust. So car exhaust in part has water in it, and that's what you're seeing in the wintertime that's coming out of the tailpipes and eventually some of it accumulates in these icy patches at intersections. Kind of actually makes for tricky driving, doesn't it? So the reactions of alkanes, while um, not especially reactive, are a couple and we'll need to describe them. So in a general sense they are inert, as in not reactive when it comes to um, acids and bases that some other compounds will react with. And many other reagents that we'll describe later will not affect the alkanes. And an example of things that are not very reactive, and it's basically like an alkane, is paraffin. If anyone's um, grandma perhaps makes jellies or jams, or maybe you know someone who does, they commonly put a layer of paraffin on the top. It's waxy stuff, and it's kind of harmless but it does not react with anything. So it's kind of inert and un, uh, it does not affect the food, but it keeps air out and bugs and bacteria and other hazardous things away from the food. So those are things that don't react very much. Paraffin is an example of something like that. So there's two reactions that we need to know. The first one is called combustion. Combustion is what we simply call burning in the presence of excess oxygen. And you have to have excess oxygen or it won't be complete and ordinary combustion. And the reaction produces heat and light, you know, like a flame. And so we're going to see our typical flame shown here somewhere. And the heat and the light results from the combustion of various kinds of alkanes. And if it's a complete combustion, there are two products, CO2 and water. But only when there's excess oxygen do you get the CO2 and water. Otherwise, if it's an incomplete combustion because you don't have enough oxygen, carbon monoxide, Mr. Yuck, something we don't want is going to form. Um, it's very hazardous, obviously, toxic. And so excess oxygen is necessary for complete combustion. This is why you will see warnings about always having sufficient air near a water heater that uses gas heat, or why you never use a camp stove inside a closed tent, which is always another hazard as well. But you have to have um, sufficient oxygen so that CO carbon monoxide will not form. So we will balance reactions very few times in this course, but let's do one for the moment just to prove that we remember how this is done. So it's going to be CO2, and it's a gas, sure, and water as the byproducts, the resulting products from the combustion of, a, say, methane. And in order to balance this, think a little bit. We have one carbon on the left, one carbon on the right. So far, so good. We have two hydrogens on the right and four on the left. That means we need twice as many. So let's put two here. The total number of oxygen here is two oxygen and two oxygen here for a total of four. So that means we're going to need more on the left side. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe that comes out even. You will be asked to do a balanced equation for a combustion reaction on homework, but all you do is figure out what type of alkane you're given and get the balancing to come out even. Go back and forth until you verify that the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are all um, balanced. So what else about these things? Here's another example of the news, and it comes up way too many times. A couple of years ago in Walker, Minnesota, a man died and another man is in, was hospitalized after apparent carbon monoxide poisoning in an ice fishing house. So they didn't get sufficient air and carbon monoxide poisoning was fatal for one person. And there are even weird cases where it occurs in indoor situations, such as the Bismarck had an incident at the Holiday Inn Express a few years ago where um, pe people were taken to the pool because they got a carbon, high carbon monoxide um, alarm going off. So insufficient um, ventilation for it creates incomplete combustion, and that's a very dangerous thing. It's toxic. That's why we need all have to have carbon monoxide detectors in our homes these days. It's wise. So the other type of reaction that 
pertains to alkanes is a type of reaction that falls in the category that is known as substitution reactions. You probably remember seeing something like this in your previous course where you have two reactants that are each in two parts and they swap their parts. In other words, A and Y combine and B and X combine to give you two new um, compounds as your products. So sodium hydroxide with HCl is an example of a substitution reaction. But in organic molecules, we're doing it a little bit differently where A and B are going to be components of a, of a carbon compound and X and Y can be something else. And so X can be like an R group on your hydrocarbon R group being other things that we don't have to specifically say, but various examples will be seen. So the simplest of these is a reaction of methane with chlorine. Chlorine is a halogen. And when you do that, you swap out one hydrogen which ends up combining with one of the chlorines, and one chlorine gets added onto the carbon. And so you end up with a chlorine with the three hydrogens remaining on the carbon from methane plus HCl. So two reactants, two products. Think of it that way. Two reactants and two products when we're looking at substitution reactions. Now, this is a very simplistic looking version for beginners. Uh, for starts, we have chlorine reacting with methane. But is that all there is to say? Well, guess what? We call this in a more general, general sense, um, reaction category number two after um, combustion. It's halogenation because all of the group seven elements are known as halogens. So group 7A on the periodic table, or group 17 if you will, are known as halogens. And then we use the letter X as representing a halogen. We're replacing a hydrogen with a halogen. You'll need to have heat or light to make them go, so we'll put in something like a triangle for heat, or this symbol here means light. If you've done physics, you kind of know how that works, but it's okay. And in other words, you've got to have something to make it go. It's not going to happen without some encouragement. And like I just showed on the previous slide, methane can react with chlorine to make a chloromethane, as you might imagine this would be called and HCl, chloromethane and HCl. But it's not the only possible product. You can have a chloromethane, which would be described as a haloalkane. So chloromethane, just like this one down here. But you can also get polychloro products. In other words, polyhalo, depending upon whether you've used chlorine or bromine or another halogen. And these are multitudinous in their possibilities. So if you get the first reaction, you will make a chloromethane. But the chloromethane can still react again to, in a second reaction with another chlorine molecule, producing a second molecule of HCl. And the product this time is called dichloromethane. Do you see that? And it kind of makes sense, two chlorines. It, that product can also react again with another chlorine molecule, given sufficient um, reaction conditions or sufficient quantities present to produce a chloro form, which is trichloromethane, this compound here, and again another HCl. And yet that one can react again. So each hydrogen in turn can be replaced, substituted if you will, by a chlorine in this type of reaction. So many kinds of products will result. Again, each time you react, you make an HCl and the HCl is what we consider as a minor side product because it's not organic, no carbon in it. And so we sort of overlook it at times, but it's helpful to remember that it's there um, because it's a necessary component of a substitution reaction to have that second product. So typically, we'll only look at reactants, things like the methane and the chlorine. A reagent is going to be like the chlorine, of course. And what kind of conditions, such as the things over the arrow, heat and light sort of stuff and they won't be balanced. Because you can't control them completely to say I'm only, there will only be a single chlorine added to the carbon or two chlorines added to the carbon. So you'll speculate what types of single chlorination or double chlorination products there might be. So these will get to be funny if you wanted to take it to all the different possible products, but usually they'll only ask you for a couple different types, monochloro or dichloro, for example. So let's take a look at something that asks us to do that. Let's start with a very simple compound. This would be C2H6, and if you think about it, I bet you know what it is. 
Let's draw it out. And two carbons, six hydrogens. It's an alkane. That's ethane. And it's going to react this time with chlorine. And we're going to use heat. That's what the triangle means. So what would the first product be? Let's do a single chlorination and put a chlorine on. It doesn't, whoops, I didn't mean to put that there. Uh oh, I better erase that just a sec. All right, so we'll put on the remaining hydrogens to complete the compound, and this would be simply called chloroethane. No more to say because there's no different carbons to describe. It's always going to be one carbon of the two and is always on the end, so there's no number needed. The byproduct, again, will be the HCl because you lose one hydrogen from the original compound to combine with one of the two chlorines from your chlorine molecule. Now, a second reaction can occur. This is the only monochloral product you can get. There's no other way to put on one. But this compound can react again, certainly with chlorine, given sufficient time and enough chlorine present to make another product that's going to have two chlorines on it. All right, what kind of possibilities does that give us? Well, we had one here. What if you put another one on the same carbon? That's a legitimate possibility. Again, you don't have to write these hydrogens in, but I'm putting them in to be complete right now. And this would be called a dichloroethane. Is there another way to put that on? And of course, there's going to be an HCl product. Another way of doing, oh, but we had, didn't finish the name. We have to describe where they are. If they each substituent gets a number and they're on the same carbon, you give them the lowest numbers, this would be one one dichloroethane. The other product you could get, there will be another one, keep thinking, would be if you put the two carbons and one chlorine was on the right to start with and the carbons have four bonds. So we're not going to put it on the same carbon this time. We have to put it on the other carbon to make it a different product. And this one would be called 1,2-dichloroethane. Okay, and again, the HCl would be a byproduct. So you can do either of these two compounds from one molecule of chloroethane. Now, could these react again with another chlorine and more heat or light to make trichloroethanes? You bet, but let's not go there. It gets to be a long, tedious business to look at all the different options. And yes, HCl would be a product. Okay, so simply looking for monochloro or dichloro products is commonly enough. You get the idea. Let's do one more example. And this one fools people often, so I'm going to give it to you here so we can try it out. Here is another compound. This, this is an alkane. I'm jumping ahead a little bit. There's one like this on the Mastering Chemistry homework. Um, if it's C5H10 and it's an alkane, there's got to be a twist because it doesn't have twice as many hydrogens plus two. It's got twice as many hydrogens. It turns out that this would be cyclopentane. And it makes for an interesting example. In your homework, you'll be using a halogenation reaction for this and being asked to draw mono and di halogenated products of it. Remembering that each corner is shown uh, represents a uh, carbon and not all the hydrogens are shown but I'm going to put them in right now just to make sure we're not um, misled and the hydrogens are 10 for those five carbons react with chlorine and we can make a monochloro product so monochlorination would be what um, monochloro well let's put it like the corners are carbons. We don't have to write them in, and we don't have to write the hydrogens in. So I'm just going to put one chlorine on right there. And so it would just be chloro cyclopentane. No more to say. Second product, yes, HCl. And so we will have displaced, substituted a hydrogen with a, one of the two chlorines from the chlorine molecule. Again, these reactions can continue. And so we add more chlorine, and the chlorocyclopentane reacts a second time. There will still be HCl as a product. And what would you get for another product? Well, we still have one chlorine on there. And how about if we put one here? Sure, that works. And it's going to be a number number dichloro 
pentane. Naming these as you go is a good practice, good idea. Or let's see, so what would the numbers be? If you have them with the lowest numbers, that has to be 1 and 2. 1 and 2 for those two chlorines. All right, let's see. Or is there another possibility? Sure. Well, here's your pentagon for cyclopentane. Can you put it here and there? Why not? And in this case, we'll have different numbers. So this will be 1, 2, 3 for lowest numbers. So 1, 3, dichlorocyclopentane. And can you do another one? You still have the HCl left over. So I'm not going to write that for each of the choices. Is there another possibility? Yes, there is. And this is the one that kind of fools people. People don't often figure this one out. You have to think about it for a while. So we had one on that particular side, the way I've drawn it, but it matters which way I drew it. It could be any of the corners and it would be the same. Where else can you put it? Could you put it on this carbon over here? No, because that would still be like carbon number three. Let's try that with colors and I'll show you. If you numbered it the other way, that would be one, two, three. Guess what? If you put the chlorine over there instead, it's the same product as what we're looking at in this particular choice. So you can't put it here because that's already one and two. One and two, and we've already done, we've done three. So the only other place left to put it is on the same carbon. Oh, so this type of dichlorocyclopentane has what numbers? Well, remember, whoops, like cyclo, sorry, cyclopentane has to have numbers and the two chlorines are on the same carbon, so it has to be one and one. Now, could this keep reacting? Sure. So let's quit with dichloro products. I don't believe there's any further, but this will help you get through your homework if you're watching. All right, so we'll leave this as an introduction, a, a, a tempting taste of what's hap going to be happening with cycloalkanes, but enough for reactions for now. Hope that helps you on your homework. Please ask lots of questions. See you in class.